Hello, Satnam, and welcome to another episode of Evolve by Erica the Podcast. I am Erica Polsonelli, your host, and we are here to talk about all things spirituality, 5D, meditation, and beyond. I am so grateful you're here. Come on in. Well, guys, I've had a really crazy week, and while it's fresh on my mind, I want to talk about it. I don't know what's going to come out. Might be a lot of emotions, but we're going to go there. Um, So on December 1st, well, December 2nd is my mom's birthday. On December 1st, she went to the doctors, ended up needing to go to the hospital, and My mom, I don't think she's ever been in the hospital unless she delivered a baby. So it was alarming. It was scary. Um, So I went with her. She was having really bad stomach issues. She was unable to go to the bathroom. And we slept in the emergency room together, which was, oh my gosh, I can't even. Um, We were there at around 10 p.m. We weren't seen by doctors till maybe five or six. It was like a really ridiculous situation. And I just think about people like my mother and other people that go to the emergency room for help and they're in so much pain and they are left to sit on a chair all night when they should be sleeping and resting. It's just like, oh my goodness, I can't even, can't even believe that that is the situation at hand. When people need rest and comfort the most, um, we're given the opposite in our health system, which I guess it is what it is. That is so multi-layered. So we went to the hospital. Long story long, she ended up having a blockage in her stomach. And luckily it was only stool. I know this is like TMI, but um, it was really scary because they've never seen anything to this extent. They've never seen anything like this. Multiple doctors told us that. And we did not know how it was going to end. And they were doing medical interventions with her, but um, a lot of the doctors were unsure how it would go. Surgery was not even an option um, for many different reasons. And it was frightening to say the least. And as I was there with her, um, first of all, (laughs) if this had happened like seven years ago before I did my meditation practice, healed so many emotions for me, for my family, um, I don't know if I would have even been able to get through this without a panic attack or something much worse. But I found my ground. I found my center. I found my calmness in moments to be there for her. And I was able to be there and support her. So as we were getting news from the doctors, it was very unsettling because at one moment they would think it was okay. The next moment they would say that they're not really sure how this is going to go and that there's no option except to wait until the blockage passes. And it was really scary thinking about what could be. And there were moments where I would just think, oh my goodness, like this could be my last time with her. Like how could I leave her? How could I not be there for her during this time? I need to be. I need to stay here. And I learned so much during this time and this experience. And there was such evidence of growth through the practice. But as I was with her, there was so much work I wanted to do. So there was emotional work that I wanted her to go into and heal because I believe that this could have all been created based off of an emotional block. So we did that. I did that work with her. I had my friend and healer, Marcy Barron, call her and do some work with her. Um, I brought my sound bowls in and was doing sound healing on her stomach. I was doing psychic surgery on her where I would visualize myself going into her GI tract, literally clearing the way and releasing it out. Um, I was using mantras, meditations, of course, and we we were doing everything, abdominal massages with essential oils. And um, it was it was a roller coaster ride. And as I was there, I wanted more than anything to my mom for my mom to make it through this experience and be here with me. 
But my higher self knew that it wasn't up to me, that I don't have control over anyone's life path. And what I really wanted for my mother was what was best for her. What I wanted for me was for her to be here with me. Um, But what I wanted for her is the best possible outcome for her, whatever that meant. And in that moment, as I sat there with her and thought of that, I... I almost couldn't believe that I could take myself to that space of trust in the universe, trust in the divine plan. And um, that is what the practice has brought me. And as some of you may know, the meditation practice to tap into Kundalini, we know how it feels on our good days. We're high, we're blissed, we're enlightened, we're feeling so good. And then on our hard days, it's almost it's sometimes impossible to get to that space because of, and you could imagine the state my nervous system was in, um, to get to that heightened state. So what I, I've realized was I still tuned in each morning. I think maybe two mornings I wasn't able to because I had to rush to the hospital or I slept there with her and I wasn't able to tune in. But I felt that I had money in the bank Okay. I felt like all of the work I've done, all of the morning practices I have done that led me to this point were there supporting me and guiding me through those days, whether I was able to get into my practice that morning or not. And that's the message I got. And on the days I was able to tune in, it took every ounce of my energy because Kundalini does require a lot of energy. I would just tune in. I would listen to, I was listening to Guru Guru, Wahi Guru, Guru Ram Das Guru, because that is the meditation for miracles. And it is the most calming, beautiful energy in a time of crisis. And I would just listen to that or breathe deeply, listen to mantra so that my mind, even if it wasn't able to be on a positive frequency, the mantra was supporting me to be. My mind, instead of being on my worries or my fears, it was on the mantra, which is a high frequency. So it was there as a scaffold for me to support me through this really hard time and to get me through it. So we had two really wild nights. I mean, it was all pretty intense. It was a roller coaster, but um, two really bad nights where we were being highly monitored. I slept there with her one of the nights and then the following night, I wanted to go back. Um, I came home for an hour and I told her I'd go back because I didn't want her to sleep alone. However, my ears were bright red, my cheeks were flush, and Vinny looked at me and said, you're not going anywhere. And I looked at him and I was like, no, I have to. And then I realized that I would not be serving her if I was getting sick if I, if I showed up there as just a body and no energetic or life force energy running through me, what would that do for her? So I had to make the decision to sleep home to take care of myself, which is hard because in my mind, I, I was saying, Erica, put yourself aside. Like she just needs you now. You don't know how much longer she'll need you. You just have to get through these next few days or however long it is. But I knew that I needed sleep and my aunt stepped in and helped me out big time. Um, I'm so, so grateful for the support system I have in my life. Um, So I was able to sleep. I was able to go there the next day, speak to the doctors and get the report. And within, I want to say 15 hours, all of a sudden, um, things turned around. That morning that I didn't sleep there, I woke up later. I stayed home. I did psychic surgery from my home. And some of you might be wondering what that is. So what I see that to be is... Me, me, of course, first having the permission that I could do this on my mom. She trusts me as a healer. She will open her energy centers up to me. And I take time to visualize her physical body. I take time to visualize within her body and literally go in energetically clear for her, clear out, um, heal, bring healing to different spaces. And I was doing that as I was listening to the miracle mantra. And within just a few hours, all of a sudden, everything turned for the better. All of a sudden, the doctor came and was like, oh, wow, your x-ray looks great. You're probably going to go home tomorrow. Meanwhile, the night before, the doctor told me it would probably be 10 more days and we're not sure how it would go. So my aunt and I, after hearing such a turnaround, maybe 12, maybe not even 12 hours after, 
it was hard to believe. Like we were like, wait, what do you mean? She might go home tomorrow or the next day. You told me last night it could be 10 more days or more than that. And we don't even know what would happen if, if it took that long, given that my mom hasn't eaten in over a week. And I had to remind myself, Erica, you believe in miracles. So stop questioning. So stop having doubt. You believe in miracles. You asked for the miracle. You meditated for the miracle. Be- now believe that you received the miracle. And I was like, shit, you're right. <laughs> Higher self, you're freaking right. So as I drove to the hospital, I um, spoke to the doctor. It was true. She was able to leave the next day, which was amazing. And thankfully she's home safely. She's going to take care of her body in different ways. Um, But it was a really, really intense experience. And to think during this time how the, first of all, the whole entire time that I was there from the beginning, I saw angel numbers everywhere. And I was telling my friend that, and she was like, well, that means everything's going to be okay. And I was like, okay, but what's okay? Okay. that And she'll be here with me. We're okay. And she'll be somewhere else. And as I started, we, I, we would come to these points that were really intense and immediately I'd see an angel number. I'm like, okay, I see you universe. I see what you're sending me. And to this moment this morning, we had another little, not a hiccup, but a moment. And I received, as soon as I was questioning something, 11, 11 on the, on, on the phone. So it was really incredible, but I learned so much out of this. And I learned that although I feel I live so much in the present and I don't take anything for granted, there's always, we could always be more present and how so much of our time can be spent on things that at the end of the day really don't mean as much as we think they do. And the only thing that is important is that the people around you who you love know you love them, you spend time with them, they feel supported by you and loved by you. And at one point when I really wasn't sure what was going to happen, I sat there and just told my mom how much I loved her because I didn't have the energy to heal her at that moment. I didn't have the energy to think positive, but the one thing I could do was feel the frequency of love and the love that I have for her. I knew that was all I was able to give, but I reminded myself how fucking powerful love is and how by feeling that and by tapping into that energy, that can heal. So I'm grateful to announce (laughs) and share that my mom is healthy. She's in perfect health. She's out of the hospital. She's back to her regular diet. And maybe she'll start meditating. (laughs) Oh, Oh my gosh. I'm a ball of tears. I feel like there's probably so much more I'll come back to. I would love to record this episode with her one day too, if she'd be willing. Oh, Oh, but for now, that is what I want to share with you. And I hope that, I hope that there is a message in here somewhere for you something to help you continue to be more present, to just enjoy the here and now, because that is truly the only thing that exists is what is here and now. And if I had spent the time thinking about what could have been, and of course there are moments I did, but I had to continue to bring myself back to the present moment. And all of the work that I've done, all of the morning practices that I've tuned into supported me through this week. There were still hard times, of course, but there was so much less resistance and so much more trust in the divine plan. And it was almost scary to feel into the magnitude of that energy and that growth to understand how deep, how deeply we can surrender and how powerful that is. Thank you so much for being here. 
Thank you so much for listening in and sending so many well wishes. I receive so many through DMs and I know right now I'm feeling them as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. May the longtime sun shine upon you. Satnam.